Can I call us to order, um, please? I know there's a, a tendency now among all participants to have dialogue, but let's, let's pause for a reflection on our forum. Um, I'm Mike Hardy. I'm delighted to see so many friends here and to have made so many new ones. We have a, a stunning uh, forum this time. And uh, this is a place for sharing, for inspiration, for networking, for making an important statement about our shared priorities. It's become a necessary moment. The World Forum for Intercultural Dialogue, the force, has become a necessary moment in all our calendars, a powerful commitment to international collaboration, made the more memorable by the amazing hospitality we receive in Azerbaijan. The forum can and does achieve a great deal, remarkable sharing of ex expertise and signposting to best practice. This is a dialogue about dialogue. And as such, it's powerful but not sufficient. We all know we take responsibility, a word that Minister Garayev used in a session recently. We must take responsibility for taking our dialogue and converting it to implementation. Um, implementation is what will be the measure of our success at the World Forum. But the World Forum is part of now an enormously important Baku process with which the President in the opening session referred to this inspirational development in 2008. The process is just that. It's a movement. It's a campaign. It continues to grow and change. And I wanted just to highlight in this closing session, and closing sessions are always sad occasions in, at one level, but let's highlight how different we've become, how much the process has moved forward. We have new priorities and interdependencies. The very title of our forum shows the interconnectedness about which we've been discussing so ably. The interconnectedness between dialogue, between dialogue and peace, dialogue, peace, and the sustainable development that brings human security. These have become commonplace lingua franca in our discussions, and so they should. We have new partners. We've written large now the need to commit to food security alongside all the other aspects, and the new. Uh, new partnership with the FAO is a brilliant development of the Baku process, of which we'll hear a bit more in a second. We have new context. This is a different world in 2017 to 2011 at the first forum. We have new religious leaders. We have new governments all around the world. We have new challenges facing us on a daily basis, and media has developed at a rate of knots alongside technology. Um, this change context requires us to be fleet of foot in our forums, and I think this forum has been very successful for having reacted quickly to some of the issues that drive us. We've got new tools. At this forum, for the first time, we've spoken in an articulate and passionate way about the role of tourism, of arts, of sports, of technologies, and different types of dialogue. Before the forum started, the UNESCO chairs met to, to commit themselves to develop an index that might measure how dialogue is good and bad in different places. That'll be a challenge, but it'll be another tool that will help us raise awareness, our main mission of the Baku process, that dialogue is critical. The chairs also committed to focus on education and, and how our experts on intercultural dialogue should be more informative and more resourceful when it comes to helping those who educate our young people. The Silk Road team was also meeting before the uh, forum formally started and committed themselves to more actions and shared the success that they'd already had. We've got new building blocks this year. We had a commitment that, uh, for the first time, of international organizations sitting around a table together in a collaboration unheard of 
of, will become a valuable part of the Baku process. We've had a commitment and a call for action on girls' education, central to the ability of this forum to influence peace, sustainable development, and the dialogue that we know sustains that. So these new contexts and the dialogue that we've had have taken us to, uh, I think, a new platform. And uh, I'm going to ask the principal owners of the Baku process, this collaboration that's quite distinct, to, to help us share some of the feelings that we have as we close. There's no doubt at all that UNESCO has been a huge support of this forum, a major support for humble people that try and help structure the forum. Uh, we've had a couple of meetings at UNESCO headquarters in Paris, and alongside the huge shared experience of the Alliance of Civilization Forum that becomes almost a sister forum to the World Forum of Intercultural Dialogue. So I'll ask first the Director General of UNESCO to, to share with, her, with us her reflections of the forum. And uh, in so doing so, I'm celebrating the contribution that she and her team have made to our work. Irina. Um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Hardy, and uh, thank you for wrapping up in such an able manner the de deliberations and the importance of uh, this forum. Uh, you know I admire your work and um, I always agree with you. I, just on a small point, if you allow me, I detest to disagree with you, but I don't think this closing is a sad moment. I think the closure session is a moment of inspiration, of motivation, of uh, a, a renewed commitment, of renewed engagement of all of us, of all our partners. I'm looking around this panel, I see so many good colleagues and partners uh, in this quest for intercultural dialogue, for peace, for inclusiveness, for human dignity. And I believe that uh, we will get out of uh, this conference, we will leave to our respective organizations and, pla and places, not just with renewed commitment, but with new ideas. And I have witnessed uh, since the very beginning how this forum evolved. I remember the first forum where Minister Garaev uh, may, may correct me, there were maybe not more than 40 countries that were coming here, uh, although it was uh, uh, good intention, good ideas, and I have seen uh, the uh, immense uh, inspiration and the development of, of this forum, and now uh, we are coming to this uh, fourth edition, I would say, of the forum within the Baku process, where <clears throat> we are not just enlarging the agenda, the topics that we are discussing, adding new ones and uh, I would say that we at UNESCO are very much motivated uh, to work uh, with you, uh, with the organizing committee, with the government uh, of Azerbaijan, with uh, Minister Garaev and his team, in order to make it relevant, in order to make it relevant to what is the international agenda today. And I think, uh, uh, speaking about UNESCO, we have organized something like 13 uh, events, uh, side events, uh, which touch exactly upon these important issues extremism and intercultural dialogue, inclusiveness uh, and intercultural dialogue, culture of peace, and how we contribute to this. And I can enumerate also uh, all the others, or looking at the, at the culture and contribution, we made a special event today on our important Sharjah Prize for uh, Arab culture, uh, where we, uh, uh, every year, uh, we have this supported, uh, I would say, very generously uh, by the ruler uh, of Sharjah, uh, which is about developing uh, the Arab culture or presenting uh, the new publication on anti-culturalism that was uh, the outcome of the uh, meeting during the last uh, forum, inter intercultural forum here in Baku of our UNESCO chair. So these are the tangible results. Or, I, I mentioned it at the last, but definitely not the least, uh, having a forum with the first ladies on the initiative of the uh, first uh, uh, Vice President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, uh, Mrs. Alieva, with having the First Ladies of uh, Ethiopia, of Rwanda, of Mali, uh, discussing with experts also why girls' education, women's empowerment is important, and how to, to uh, respond to extremism, which sometimes uh, it is not just attacking women, uh, which are using violence as a tool of war in many of the conflict areas, the vulnerability of refugees and women refugees, uh, and also uh, girls' education as a response 
to this extremism as a tool also for intercultural dialogue. Because, and I quoted this morning uh, with the First Lady, I remember vividly the words of Malal Yousafzai, the Nobel Peace Prize winner. Uh, she was kind enough to invite me to the ceremony in Oslo where she was saying that the best tool, the best arm of fighting extremism are books and pens. Mm. And this is also a response to what we want to achieve, to have a harmonious, peaceful world and to fight this violent extremism. So, um, in a nutshell, I think that uh, this forum uh, was not uh, uh, just the biggest ever because we had more than 120 countries, a very comprehensive agenda, uh, an extremely, I would say, professional and uh, important uh, uh, debate from the point of view of the expertise that was submitted uh, during these debates. I think its uniqueness is also because there are so many different stakeholders that participate. There are ministers, there are ministers of culture, ministers of education, ministers of women affairs, of social affairs. There are experts, academia, which are here with us. There are the civil society, which is very strong. And of course, it's, I would say, universality is really becoming a, a big asset for this forum as a place to discuss these so important issues nowadays, which are on the agenda of the United Nations, which are on the agenda of UNESCO, of, uh, I'm sure, of UNICESCO, because with the, uh, ISESCO, which is our privileged partner, the same sister organization and ours, not to speak, of course, about the Alliance of Civilization or the uh, International Tourist Organization. So I think this contribution, and this year we have the FAO, also with very interesting perspective, and I think this particular uh, look and contribution, which is very comprehensive from different points of view, is helping us fight, uh, find the right answers. So, in order to end with what I started, I think it's a moment now when we will be leaving, it's a moment of commitment, of engagement. I think we all feel a certain sense of urgency that we have to act, as, as you said, the implementation of these ideas. We have to act. The world outside uh, this uh, beautiful city, this beautiful country, uh, which is uh, developing, uh, stable, uh, as I have said many times, which serves as a bridge to the east and west on the Silk Road, uh, in the north and the south, with the generous, I would say, uh, helping other countries, uh, in this particular case, speaking about uh, Africa in girls' education, supporting many programs. But the world out there is very fragile, and peace is very fragile. And how to sustain peace, how to build these inclusive, resilient societies, how to prevent, in certain cases, this extremism and fight this magic formula of living together, uh, I think this, words, this uh, uh, deserves all our efforts and uh, uh, all our commitment. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this uh, uh, conference with uh, much more optimism that we are on the right path, uh, that uh, there is so much mobilization, there is so much understanding, better understanding of what and how, and uh, uh, what we should do indeed, as you rightfully said, we have to go out to our respective places and start continue working very hard in order to build the peace in the minds of women and men, what is in our UNESCO's constitution and what is valid, I think, for all of you here today in this room. So, thank you. Thank you, uh, Director General. I stand corrected. I'm, of course, sad because of the personal contacts that I so enjoy, but inspired we must be from those words. And, Moving very quickly to the Alliance of Civilizations has been a very strong partner to the Baku process um, and a huge innovative uh, force for good. And I've, I'd ask uh, His Excellency Abdul Nasir Al Nasir, to uh, the High Representative, to tell us his feelings and impressions. <coughs> Thank you, Michael. Uh, first, let me begin of thanking my dear friend. Minister Abul Fas Karayev and the government of Azerbaijan for organizing such an important uh, conference. And we, as the UN Alliance of Civilization, very delighted to be part of other partners to co-organize this uh, important uh, conference. Uh, I see the commitment not only f 
from governments, but also from uh, civil society, religious leaders, NGOs, uh, number of participants. I listen to many uh, speeches. Uh, I think the, the issue of intercultural and interreligious dialogue is becoming more important as we see the world is going through really a big challenge. And I thank the government of Azerbaijan for their commitment, especially the leadership, uh, President Ilham Aliyev, uh, for his commitment and his support for uh, this issue. And I look forward uh, for more cooperation with Azerbaijan and with other uh, colleagues from the U UN agencies and from others to work together and to achieve uh, the goal of how we can promote as well uh, the prevention, preventive diplomacy. I think this is the key uh, to, to really bring peace to the world. Uh, as we uh, uh, as I said, that we are one of the co-organizers. The Alliance uh, organized one plenary on role of dialogue and preventing violent extremism, and two breakout sessions on dialogue in an age of polarization. We showcase our alumni who work in promoting intercultural dialogue, as well as we are going now to, to jointly work with the FAO and government of Azerbaijan on food security, and I look forward for the meeting which will hopefully take place in October in Rome. I also uh, commend the President uh, Elham Aliyev in his statement when he mentioned that the uh, government of Azerbaijan and the alliance will next year, when they celebrate the 10th anniversary of Baku process, will be the first international award will be given to uh, a high-level uh, personality which cont uh, contributed to the uh, to the issue of intercultural and interreligious around the world. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Minister, and we leave Baku with, with, as my dear friend Irena said, with optimistic optimism and very happy for the result. Uh, I think uh, they will circle uh, the joint statement uh, by all the organizer, and that will reflect the commitment from all of us uh, to this meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you, High Rep. And it, uh, it is a remarkable team that we have um, putting this together, and, uh, and delivering that level of commitment and passion is important. Um, ISESCO has been a huge part of the Baku process from its inception. And I call upon His Excellency Abdulaziz Al Tawaji now to give us his reflections, my good friend. Thank you, Professor Hardy. Good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We come to the conclusion of, of this beautiful forum in its fourth edition. I would like to start by thanking His Excellency the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, First Lady, Vice Deputy President, the Government, the people of Azerbaijan for the warm uh, reception and generous hospitality. We spent very remarkable and memorable days in this beautiful capital, which is growing day after day. And I would like to thank my dear friend, Abu Fas Garayev, the Minister of Culture and Tourism, who is the moving dynamo of, of the whole forum with his team, this capable team. 
they have been working day and night to prepare and to run and to supervise this forum until it came to its conclusion, which is a very remarkable conclusion. Also, I would like to thank the partners who co-organized this forum, the Alliance of Civilization, UNESCO, the World Tourism Organization, the European Council, FAO. I cannot uh, thank CISCO because uh, one person cannot uh, thank himself, but uh, I will commit CISCO for all the future events because we are in an endeavor that serves humanity and serves peace and security and prosperity for the whole people of the world. During the past few years, ESESCO implemented many activities in the field of uh, culture of peace, rapprochement of uh, cultures, alliance of civilizations, dialogue among the followers of religions. We opened a center for the first time in Yamasokro in, the, in Cote d'Ivoire for the culture of peace, peace. And it is running very efficiently, and I'm very proud of that. Because of the success of the center, we decided to open two other centers, one in the Arab region and one in Asia. Because the culture of peace, which started in UNESCO, and we share with UNESCO all these values, has to be disseminated at all levels and in all venues. Because the, the, the coming generations need to be uh, educated with the culture of peace, of respecting the cultural and religious diversity, living in a unified world that has become a, a small village. And uh, we have to eradicate and move away from all our societies the notions of hatred, of phobias, of discrimination, of looking down at others. The religions came to save humanity in finding a better self-confidence and reward from the Creator. They were not sent by God to make us enemies, to fight each other and to hate each other. And what we see right now is not the teachings of the religions at all. It is the teachings of those who misused interpretation and misinterpreted, misused and misinterpreted the teachings of religions. The forum is a remarkable trademark now in the world. We have to maintain it, we have to protect it, we have to support it. And as far as ESESCO is concerned, we will be a very faithful partner. I thank all the participants the ladies and gentlemen, young and middle aged and old, I am an old person. <clears throat> All of them have really participated fully to the success of this, of this forum. And this shows the commitment of the international com community. You represent the world and you show the whole world that we are all united for peace, for togetherness and for sustainable development. Thank you very much. So thank you and I think we all agree this is a very strong brand, a strong trademark, and, and the reason for that is the distinctiveness of its partners. And I can't overstate the contribution that the World Tr Tourism Organization has played in this process by reminding us at a very early stage of the power of movement, of the power of people exchanging experiences. Um, and I call upon... Uh, uh, Taleb Rifai to give us his reflections and thank him very much for the continued support of, of the WTO. Thank you so much, Mike. You know, when an idea Lorsque une idée euh, réussit euh, pour la première fois, c'est une excellente idée, mais euh, lorsqu'elle réussit une deuxième fois, elle devient une très bonne idée, mais lorsqu'elle réussit une troisième fois, cela devient une idée exceptionnelle, et lorsqu'elle réussit pour la quatrième fois, c'est une tradition. Nous ne reviendrons jamais euh, en arrière. Minister, everybody, you've done a great, great job. I want to just try to sum up my thoughts in three words. We're in the right time, the right place, discussing the right subject. We're in the right time because there is a feeling of anxiety. There is a feeling that there's an urgent need for us to act. And that's a good feeling. It's a healthy feeling. It's not a dominus feeling at all, and I want to insist 
We're not living the worst of times at all. The world is a beautiful world out there. We just want to make sure it continues to be like this and we deliver this world to our future generations in a better shape than we have received it. We're paying the price of our success, that's all. Because we succeeded. Because 20, 30 years ago, the world was not the way it is today. So we are anxious and we are aware and we are conscious of all the challenges that are ahead of us. And that's precisely why we're in the right time to meet. But we're also in the right place. Anybody, anybody that would have listened to a head of state speaking the way Ilham Alayev spoke yesterday would have realized that we did come to the right place. Anybody that was watching and observing the faces of the young women and men that were serving us everywhere would realize that we're in the right place. This is such a good country with good people and I tried to think last night, why is it like this? And I only could come up with a very simple, naive explanation. You young people of this country are so proud of your country. You have every reason to be. But you're proud, yet you're modest and kind at the same time. It's a powerful combination. A place is not about mountains or lakes or black seas or buildings. It's about people. It's the people of Azerbaijan that are the real asset here. The proud, yet modest, kind, and very, very compassionate people of Azerbaijan. I want in the name of all of you to thank every man and woman that I don't know the name of and you don't know the name of. The people that were serving us on dinners and lunches. The people that were coaching us to the buses. The people that are sit standing there in the back of the room making sure that if we even glimpse with our eyes, they would come to say, can I help you? These are the real people that we need to thank. We also established a principle, and I want to thank Mike for this. What we did here is discuss the issues, but the real work, as Irina said, is to be done outside of these rooms. It's the people that make the difference. When we talk about intercultural dialogue, we're talking about people. We don't need to educate the others only. We need to educate ourselves as well. We need to make sure that people have all the opportunities to meet and talk together. That's all that we can do. We cannot direct this world in any way that we'd like it to direct. We simply have to create the atmosphere and the environment that would allow people to interact, to see each other, to meet, to rub shoulders, to eat with each other, to see that we're people after all. All of us, the same thing with dreams. We're mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandchildren. We're real people all over the world. And that's what we should always keep in mind. Dialogue is about people meeting people. It's not about intellectuals like us that think that we can change the world and go to bed sleeping well if we have said the right thing. That does not mean anything at all. At the end of the day, it's the people that make the difference. We discussed three interlocking issues, peace, human security, and sustainability, and established the link between all three, particularly peace and sustainability. There is no peace if there is no sustainability, and no sustainability if there is no peace. And that's something that we always have to keep in mind. Let me conclude by saying the following. We're proud, we're privileged, we're lucky to be here. We're lucky people. We don't have to wake up tomorrow and worry whether our children have food or not. We have a roof over our heads. We have good families, we have good children. We should make sure that the whole world enjoys that. We people in this room are very privileged people to be living the way we live, and to be here in this beautiful country and experiencing these beautiful moments. Let's not ever forget that. Azerbaijan is a blessed country. Minister, believe me, you're lucky people. There are many people around the world that would have loved to share your way of life and the circumstances that you're living in. I hope 
God would bless all of these blessings and keep you in one shape and you keep you always together. I want to end with a very special tribute. Please, if you allow me. We have a lady with us that probably would not be with us in her private, in her official capacity next year. Irina Bokova, what you have done throughout the years should be remembered, should always be cherished. You're a wonderful lady, and I want to make sure everybody gives you the right tribute. Thank you so much. Thank you. Taleb, thank you very much. And uh, you remind us, of course, that we're really a family. And uh, that's a very nice ending to your speech. Thank you. And I'm going to call on another member of our family now, the Council of Europe, that brings the authority and wisdom of being driven by its 47 member states, including Azerbaijan. Your reflection is a very important member of our team. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ardi. Um, it's a pleasure to uh, represent the Deputy Secretary General, Ms. Battaini, who uh, um, sends her warm uh, welcome regards to all the participants um, uh, on behalf of the Council of Europe. Uh, we are a proud partner of the um, Baku uh, Forum uh, for Intercultural Dialogue since it is, uh, is, is beginning. Um, and uh, we are uh, very much appreciate the contribution um, that uh, um, Azerbaijan uh, does within the, the organization and also uh, we thank them for uh, having organized the, um, um, the forum. The, the forum, I think, uh, showed uh, remarkable support for uh, all the uh, international organization's work that is being done um, to promote uh, inter intercultural dialogue. All the international organizations, uh, the Council of Europe, is uh, cooperating with showed that we, we uh, have a, our own field of competence, but we are also very much working together in order to uh, join forces. And the Baku, Baku Forum is really um, a very good example of, uh, of, of cooperating uh, at, a, at a global level. And for the Council of Europe, is also an opportunity to meet um, uh, countries and partners and uh, organizations beyond the European, uh, mm. uh, the European borders and the 47 uh, member states. Um, so um, it's really a family, and the Council of Europe is very, very proud to be, to be part of it. Uh, as far as the uh, Council of Europe as an international organization is concerned, um, the organization will continue to, uh, uh, to protect uh, the, um, uh, the, kind of the building blocks of, of our uh, democratic societies, the, the protection and promotion of human rights and, and democracy and, uh, and the rule of law. And through our instruments, as you know, our conventions, our monitoring mechanisms, uh, our activities on the ground, we will uh, continue to uh, fight discrimination, uh, intolerance, racism, and, and extremism. But at the same time, uh, this forum was very much also on uh, uh, showcasing the, all the activities that are done to, to building inclusive societies. And, and therefore, uh, the Council of Europe has brought its, its own uh, also small contribution in, in a global uh, perspective to this with, with two activities that, uh, that we presented here um, at the forum in the field of the work that the North-South Center of Lisbon is doing in promoting um, uh, skills, intercultural uh, dialogue training for, for young generations uh, in Europe and beyond, and also uh, in the field of the, um, of the cultural roots of the Council of Europe as a tool to promote uh, uh, and protect and respect cultural diversity, but also intercultural dialogue through, um, uh, through, through Europe and, and beyond. So thank you again for, um, for this opportunity um, to Azerbaijan and to uh, the participants. We've uh, um, appreciated very much all the activities that have been uh, going on in the field of, uh, of intercultural dialogue, and I think it's a, it's a very, very positive outcome of the forum, which we thank you very much. We're, um, thank you very much. We're so proud and very pleased with our latest family recruit, Fao. This is a very important part of human security that we're, we're now taking responsibility for as the World Forum and as the Baku process. So I'd ask Marcella Villarreal to uh, tell us her feelings from Fao. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I'd just like to say that from Fao, we're absolutely delighted 
uh, to be part of this family and uh, to be now uh, a full-blown partner. Um, and uh, we know that uh, by working together, we can really advance the issue of food security. Uh, food security is obviously completely integrated in the areas that we talked about in these uh, two days. Uh, food security is uh, very closely linked with sustainable development. And indeed, sustainable development goal number two is about food security. And uh, here, the world has committed itself to not only reduce, but to eradicate hunger from the face of the world from here to 2030. So here we have, Mike, a very urgent problem that we have to face, and that cannot be faced alone. So uh, we are sure that uh, by working together, we will definitely bring and do inroads into, into this problem. Food security is an integral part of human security and therefore directly linked with peace. Whenever there is conflict, there is food security. We know that in all countries with protracted crisis, food security is three times, three times higher than other countries of the same socioeconomic level uh, that are not in protracted crisis. And we know also that whenever, whenever there is food insecurity, there's a higher risk of conflict. So food insecurity can cause conflict. Food insecurity or its underlying causes, uh, like uh, for example, drought. Uh, drought has been uh, shown to be directly linked, obviously, to food insecurity, but also uh, to conflict in uh, countries like uh, Somalia, in Rwanda, in Burundi, and many, in many others. So we can say that there is no peace without food security. There is no food security without uh, peace. So we are convinced that by intercultural dialogue, we will be able to advance on the food security agenda. Um, there is a, a, an urgency to the problem, as I said before, because we have, we have to solve the problem and we have few years uh, to do it together. So as uh, the Baku process and now the tradition of the Baku uh, forum, which we very much welcome, uh, moves ahead and Mike has called us for the need to do implementation, we're very happy to put on the table grounds for implementation where we can work together and walk the road together by listening to each other, listening to others, making sure that everybody listens to each other through true dialogue um, and see, test for ourselves how far this will take us. We have a number of situations. Today we mentioned the situation of post-conflict in Central African Republic, also in Colombia. Here we have two very good grounds where we can see we can test our ideas, we can take them actually hmm. to where the rubber hits uh, the ground. So we are extremely happy that uh, the next uh, step in the process, the next meeting is going to take place actually in Rome. We have already set up the task force, but uh, we would be very happy to listen to all of your ideas of how we can take this process along together, uh, see you all in Rome, and hopefully there, we will be able to uh, see how far we can get down to the next uh, part of the process, which is implementation. Thank you, and thank you very much to all of our partners, and very specifically, the government <coughs> of Azerbaijan. So, um, a long friend of the Baku process, and a very important member of the, uh, the think tank behind it, Jean-Christophe Basque of the Global Compass, will now share his reflections. Jean. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, actually, I'm very humbled to be uh, in this podium with uh, so many uh, important intergovernmental organizations and uh, representing actually a, a small organization myself. And uh, I was wondering actually in what capacity I was here and, uh, and maybe, as a, maybe as a veteran uh, of the Baku process, having been uh, among those, the very few actually who have been attended the four edition uh, of the, the Baku Forum. Um, uh, among those also who can claim, actually, to be proud of how much has been accomplished in just a couple of years. Um, but just claiming, and uh, you know, the image of the family has been used by many uh, speakers before, and uh, you know, there's always a, a tendency to say that uh, success has many parents, 
when failure uh, is usually an orphan. And, um, and to be very honest, uh, I think that uh, uh, the, those who can really claim uh, to be proud of uh, what has been accomplished is really uh, Minister Gariev, uh, who came up with this uh, vision a few years ago and uh, uh, with his team, with, uh, and I think it would be also fair you know, to recognize the role uh, played by uh, Deputy Minister Mabadayeva and Vasif, uh, who I think from the very start, about 10 years ago, uh, all together have played a fantastic role. And I don't think that any of those who were around the table 10 years ago at the very first meeting uh, of the Baku process would have even in, in our widest dream so that uh, uh, the, mm. uh, the process, that the conference and the process would be so successful in 10 years' time. So I think that uh, 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 President Gariev and, uh, and the government of Azerbaijan and your team, uh, you can be really immensely proud of what has been accomplished in just 10 years. And, uh, and uh, indeed, the Baku uh, conference has really become uh, the converging point of all those uh, around the world and from very different walks of life are involved in promoting intercultural dialogue and understanding, and I think that just in itself is a tremendous accomplishment. Um, I think that as an observer, I was also very, of course, involved in this forum, what really struck me was that there were so many things going on uh, in parallel. And, uh, and, and so that was a, a tremendous, let's say, a tremendous offer. And um, if I can say, you know, that, uh, uh, Mr. Gariev, that a little complaint is that you have not equipped us with the skill of being uh, of ubiquity, uh, because in a way it was somewhat frustrating, you know, to see so many things, so many interesting discussion taking place and not being able, you know, because we were not equipped with your ubiquity uh, to take part of uh, all those events. And uh, um, you have managed indeed to bring so many different partners on board. Um, and um, I think that one of, from, at least from my perspective, what I see as one of the major breakthroughs um, and as a tremendous accomplishment or a tremendous development in the forum was this meeting that took place yesterday mm. with all the intergovernmental inter organization. Uh, the room was tremendous, mm. uh, but uh, was really packed with uh, uh, multilateral organization, regional organization, bilateral development agencies. And I think this is indeed uh, a tremendous accomplishment. Also this capacity to bring international financial institution, bilateral development agencies, because they also have the resources to, I mean, to bring to the table financial resources to implement some of the goals and some of the objectives uh, that uh, are discussed um, um, uh, during the, the, this, uh, this process. Um, one other virtue of this uh, meeting of intergovernmental organization was actually to provide a platform for them to cooperate, to build synergy, to work together, and also uh, as an opportunity to advocate and to mainstream intercultural dialogue in the international development agenda. And I think this is highly needed uh, because, um, of course, we have the SDG 16, which is a major progress uh, that recognizes the need to build inclusive society. But there's still a long way to go. Um, and I was very impressed yesterday um, listening to President Aliyev mm. um, opening uh, uh, address when he said that uh, the, the forum is addressing one of the most important topics in the global agenda. Mm. And it is true, actually, that intercultural dialogue, intercultural understanding is one of the most important topics on the global agenda. And there is still a long way to go. And um, there was a session yesterday uh, on the rise of populism and the impact of intercultural dialogue, which was kind of very scary, you know, to really look at uh, uh, the potential negative impact uh, of the rise of, of, uh, of uh, populism and, uh, and we knew with this kind of new dividing line um, you know, there is no uh, line between the right and the left or the conservative and the progressive, but this 
the dividing line, which is also a growing gap between those who are the globalists and the localists, and, and, and really the need to address this, uh, uh, this, this gap. Um, and uh, if I, as a last uh, word, Mike, if you allow me, um, I think it's really very important uh, to decouple our efforts. Um, there is a, a need also to really to engage with all the international organization, to mobilize all the energy, and if I can bring uh, a modest suggestion, uh, is really to look at how to engage in a significant way the corporate sector, uh, which has a tremendous uh, knowledge and experience in operating worldwide and in coping with uh, diversity and different culture. And I think that the, you know, what we could call the global connectors uh, uh, can play a very important role uh, as, uh, uh, and to become a, a, some sort of a, a, the faster engine for inclusion. So once again, uh, Mr. Uh, Minister Gareyev, uh, uh, thanks a lot uh, for uh, all this success and your effort, and, and, uh, and thanks for uh, having uh, made part of the, the process, uh, and best wishes for the, for the future. Thank you, Jean-Christophe. And uh, we have uh, come a remarkable way. Next year, as the President reminded us yesterday, will be the 10-year anniversary. So we're going to bounce out of this room with energy and ideas for how we'll take that forward. But the last word must, of course, go to my good friend, uh, Minister Abul Fas Gareyev, who owns this and is responsible for all its success. Minister. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, for me, it is a great responsibility because I'm representing only one small country, which is the proud member of all these international organizations. And to speak in front of so important uh, personalities is a double responsibility. But uh, I will uh, try to have the strength in myself to share some ideas with you. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for your great contribution to the Baku process from its first beginning, the days when we couldn't even dream, like Jean-Christophe not noted. The result I will give you, first of all, the figures. We started with the 40 countries. Today, at this forum, we had 123 countries. The total number of the participants, participant is more than 1,500, where 800 people came specially to participate in these meetings from abroad. 200 speakers during these two days, 200 people had chance to express their views, ideas, thoughts, to share the projects and visions for future. We participated at 40 different panels, roundtables, presentations, side events, and I'm not counting the cultural programs. We had 46 international organizations sitting at the table in one room discussing their vision for tomorrow. Thanks to Honorable Assistant Director General of United Nations, Mahir, whatever had been done in all the sessions, everything which we were discussing and talking about was in live version transmitted to United Nations TV and United Nations website. I think this permitted us not to have 1,500, but we had auditorium which covered big part of the world who is interested in this policy, in this discussion, in the future peace and cooperation. Now I will come to the final 
idea which I have now. Uh, I was trying to put one word from every uh, invent, uh, in, intervention of my honorable uh, co-organizers. First, uh, it is not according to the way they were making the speeches, but I will try to find it out. Uh, it was commitment to preventive diplomacy. It was, and commitment to preventive diplomacy is something maybe much more important than uh, to make actions afterwards. Uh, it's better to take care about your health before getting some illnesses. And it's less spending money and it's less uh, danger and less suffering and so on. That's why the, this committee to preventive diplomacy brings us to the second word, implementation. Implementation because if we will stop with the discussing in this auditorium the ideas we shared and will not follow up them to bring them in life, uh, I don't see any sense in doing that. We are convinced for necessity of this dialogue and this cooperation. This is the third word, convinced. The word beyond, beyond the borders, beyond the religions, beyond the organizations, beyond the uh, geographical, political borders and whatever. I think the activity beyond is something which is uniting the credo and the style of activity of all these responsible uh, organizations uniting humanity today. Uh, you notice that this forum now is a certain trademark. This is the word number five, trademark. Uh, but trademark is something uh, which must be proved and must uh, be proved not only by your empty promotion. It must be proved by the uh, quality of the product you are bringing to the market and make it the trademark. And I think that this is the matter of synergy. Synergy, this is the word number six. It would, will not be possible if the synergy of all our activities will come together to this two days forum in Baku. And the last, may I go a little bit further backwards? Uh, we i working a little bit long, like a minister. Uh, and uh, at the first uh, period of time when we were working in uh, the country, which was not very strong, uh, a lot of different organizations were coming to Azerbaijan with proposals to assist in some fields of activity. And uh, most of them were connected with the refugees, with the food program, with education, technical support, and so on and so on. And sometimes we noticed that the every newcomer was bringing the idea and activity and proposal which were duplicating the same proposals which were coming from other organizations. Sometimes they were not fulfilling each other. They were no, you know, sustainability and follow up of the proposals which we could accept to improve the situation. But today, when we have this synergy and the organizations which usually, sometimes it is not the competitions, it's not rival, but it's sometimes uh, their own programs, their own vision of the activity. When they all come together, then we see that when we cooperate with each other, when we uh, correlate our programs with each other, when we talk about the same topics in one defined place, then we work out the programs which are giving us follow-up and prolongation and uh, sustainability in the activity we are talking about. And from this point of view, I think that the last words, right time, right place, right subject, must be added 
with right people, because right personalities, because if there were no these honorable leaders of international organizations who had the courage and decisiveness to come to Baku and support this program, this Baku process, it will never happen. So uh, I'm thankful to all of you for your very dedicated support. And uh, I'm so pity that uh, you, the Talib said uh, already that uh, we are expecting changes in UNESCO and Irina Bokova uh, next forum will participate in other position, we hope, in other maybe uh, portfolio or other activity uh, action. The same will happen with uh, our brother Talib Rifai. Uh, we are going to have a new general secretary uh, in September. But I hope that Talib, you impact to the Baku process and Irina's impact to the Baku process, along with all the dignities who are sitting here, will never be forgotten. And I please applaud them for this support. <laughs> on behalf of the government of Azerbaijan, on behalf of the uh, host of this event, we thank all participants, all those who found their time, valuable ideas they brought here. I thank all the ministers, all the dignitaries, all the leaders of international organizations who joined us for this event. And I think that Baku process will be followed up uh, during next two years to have next year the 10th anniversary of Baku process and in 2018, we will have the fifth forum where you already invited all of you. Uh, but, but we will never forget the history because without knowing the history, you don't see the future. All our achievements, all our faults, all our mistakes, all our correct steps are bringing to the better future. Thank you very much for all of you.